Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to my virtual arcade. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and if you like my content, hit that like button. It really helps the channel to grow and also motivates me to create more content for all you awesome subscribers. Today, I'm going to show you my ultimate fully modded Wii for 2020 and beyond. We'll be taking a look at the custom aesthetic mods I've done to my Wii, as well as take a detailed virtual tour of the software mods I have installed and my personalized menu setup. Are you all ready? All right then, let's jump right in. The Nintendo Wii was originally released in 2006 and stood out compared to the PS3 and Xbox 360 for its lack of horsepower, but most importantly for its unique motion controls. The control options along with a Super Mario Galaxy release was enough motive for me to skip the two power systems that generation in exchange for this little white machine back in 2007. The first soft mod I have done on this was in 2008 in order to play Tatsunoko vs Capcom which when first released was not available in America. So I ordered it from PlayAsia and modded the Wii to be region free. Well things kind of snowballed from that day in 2008 up until now. So here it is my fully modded Wii for 2020 and beyond. I wanted to change my Wii to look more current, but still wanted to keep the originality of the clean white integrity it had when I first bought it. So I added black accents to emphasize the hard lines of the console. And it works well to keep the Wii looking updated, sleek, and clean. I actually hardwired the disc loading light to stay on when the console is powered on, as opposed to only flashing on for a few seconds. Next, I changed the blue to be a CN to purple gradient fade to be cohesive with the side window lighting you'll see coming up. I added the side window to have an internal view of the hardware inside of the Wii, lit by two LED strips set to a CN to purple fade. Ultimately, this was done to match the overall scheme of my Vaporwave 80s arcade room. To improve the video quality of the Wii, I purchased these three items which, when combined, work wonders on the native output. The first piece is the Hyperkin Wii HDMI converter, which plugs in directly to the back of the Wii video output. The second piece is a female-to-female -female HDMI connector, which connects to the third and most important piece, the Marseille M cable which takes the 480p signal from the Hyperkin and uses its own graphics processor to output a super clean 1080p picture. Is it worth it? Well, if you're a fanatic like me about the Wii and game on about a 50 inch plus TV, hell yeah, it's worth it. But to each his or her own, look up a few vids on YouTube and see if it's right for you. I set up my Wii to start up directly into USB Loader GX, which is a backup launcher that lets me play games and emulators off of my 1TB external hard drive in combination with my 32GB SD card, which holds all the emulator files. I actually ported the USB Loader theme myself from an amazing Wii Flow menu theme released in 2019 called Rap City, created by Hakaisha. This awesome theme, however, was not available for USB Loader GX. I compiled my own version as an ode to the original design. I also added different background songs, mostly synthwave, that play randomly while in the menu. USB Loader lets you download box art for games and emulators, but instead of downloading the weird box art available for the emulators, I just designed and installed my own icons for a cleaner interface. Here's FCE Ultra GX, an NES emulator that works perfectly. Gen Plus GX is a Genesis Mega Drive emulator that also plays flawlessly. Not 64 as an emulator for Nintendo 64. Many of the N64 ROMs work great, and many of them don't. But that's not to say this emulator is bad. 
On the contrary, there are hundreds of games I'm still able to play without any issues. I haven't figured out how to get box art working for Not64, but that's on my list of things to do with the Wii. Wii SXR is a PS1 emulator that is also picky with some games, but it still plays many ROMs quite well. I have yet to get box art to work for this emulator too, but I'm working on it as well. RetroArch plays a ton of classic arcade games. There are literally thousands of arcade games in my RetroArch library, but it doesn't recognize all four controllers in four player games. MAME is another classic arcade game emulator, but MAME gives me no issues at all when playing four player games like The Simpsons with other people. SNES 9XGX is yet another perfect emulator for all of the SNES games. And my final emulator is Wii 2600 an Atari 2600 emulator for nostalgia purposes. It was my first home console as a little kid, so I just had to install this. Luckily, I was able to get the box art for this to work, which was a bit of a task, but wow, this is some cool retro game art to preserve, so it was worth it, and the time invested as well. The cool thing about USB Loader GX is that it allows me to categorize my games, and so I went with an arcade game style list that's easy to navigate. The classic arcade stick, which combined with my fighting game category, is over 75 Wii, GameCube, Virtual Console, and WiiWare games that are all compatible with my arcade sticks. Yup, 75 plus games on the Wii that don't need a Wiimote and Nunchuck. This even includes a few games like Donkey Kong Country that were meant to be played with a Wiimote, but with an enabled cheat that I found, can be played with the arcade stick instead. The light gun category showcases my 18 on rail shooter collection. And if you were in the arcades in the 90s, I bet you can imagine how many hours of fun these games are. The pinball category has about four very cool 3D pinball games, which are included in a recent vid I just did on Wii Virtual Pinball. Check that video out, it's got some cool stuff. There are actually two racing categories. The first is arcade style racing games that use the Wii Wheel. This is great during arcade night. One special note in the category is Mario Kart CTGP Revolution, which with the original game disc can be and still is being played by many people online and even today. With over 200 new custom tracks, this game mod is a must have. The second racing category, Logitech Racing, has 11 Wii and GameCube racing games that use my Wii Logitech steering wheel or my GameCube Logitech steering wheel for some serious arcade racing action. And lastly, the all games category is my entire game collection of Wii, GameCube, Virtual Console, and WiiWare. About 335 games total that can be played in USB Loader GX. There are a lot more games out there, but to be honest, it's mostly just shovelware, so I only have what I know I'm going to play and enjoy. My modded Wii also has a few entertainment apps, which I can access by going to the original Wii home screen, 
which I also changed to a custom theme called Dark Wii. Wii Radio is a music media player that plays MP3s, but I always use it to stream online music stations. The visualizer on this is awesome too. WMC is a video player that allows me to watch all movies and TV show files from my external hard drive. I'm still adding to my collection of my favorite cartoons and movies from when I was a kid, like the X-Men cartoons from the 90s uh, or the early Batman series, Tom and Jerry. I'm still adding to my collection and I've still got a lot of space to go. I also have tons of movies in here too from the past, especially video game movies like Mortal Kombat. It feels really good to be able to watch these kinds of movies. And I am, of course, adding some current video game movies too. Um, like that little blue hedgehog guy. I also have some synthwave vids on here when I just want to chill in my arcade room and space out on some retro visuals. The picture quality using WMC is crystal clear too if you know how to set up your video encoders, especially with the M cable. And lastly is the SD card menu which houses more WiiWare and Virtual Console games. Just to fill some extra space, everywhere I go within this Wii there's something to find. It's literally my own little virtual arcade. I hope you enjoyed this episode of My Virtual Arcade, virtuing into the world of my ultimate fully modded Wii for 2020 and beyond. If you enjoyed the vid, please hit that like button and also subscribe if you haven't already. Catch you on the next episode peeps.